We are two weeks away from 2017 Royal Rumble. Digging 29 holes for 29 souls. Grr. Great lineup so far. You know, I'm I'm somewhat imaginative. Nothing too far fetched. But I thought, you know, hey, why not give my predictions? Let's start with the obvious. This is one that has been going around the internet for since WWE Universe decided we didn't know how to count. Ty Dillinger is entrant number 10. All you have to do is play his intro. My nephew could tell you that Samoa Joe should be in the Royal Rumble. My nephew can't even speak yet. He barely has teeth, but he can still tell you that. Innate knowledge that babies are born with, it sits in your heart and you never lose that. WWE, go with your heart. And then, of course, the mojo will come in and, like, kill everyone. <laughs> Lights go down. Violin starts. Lights come up. Nakamura comes down to the steps into the ring, goes straight for Samoa Joe, and it's like an epic Peter Griffin versus the chicken battle. Eliminates Samoa Joe, and then rolls out underneath the bottom rope and exits. Let's face it, Shinsuke Nakamura doesn't need to win. He's won at life. <laughs> Of course, Lord Mayor President James Ellsworth is going to enter the Royal Rumble. Some people are just born for greatness. The Revival has one entrant. <laughs> How can they do that? Unless they're like actual conjoined twins, and I don't even know what the rules are for that. Maybe it still counts as two people. But there is a way around it. Scott Dawson stacked on Dash Wilder's shoulders. Trench coat, Spectre Gadget hat for funsies. One entrant. Loopholes for everything. And then once they're eliminated, I guess if they're eliminated, if they are ever eliminated, is it possible to eliminate the revival? Then they come to SmackDown Live and dominate. All the children will rejoice. There'll be world peace and everything will be right. Full entrance, full choir, rainbows, glitter bombs, unicorns, only to be eliminated as soon as he gets to the ring by none other than entrant number 10, Ty Dillinger. As he's going down, takes out Ellsworth with him. Once again, we've seen what shape he's in, but damn, followed immediately by a, a bit of a throwback. I don't know what their relationship is like nowadays. One can hope one is the godfather to another's child. One would hope that's what happened eventually after the whole <laughs> Or Shawn Michaels is super kicked through a perspex shooter glass by Marty Jannetty and eliminated over the top rope. <laughs> I know, wrong promotion, he's not signed, blah, 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 blah. But like I said, this is my list and the girl can dream and one dreams about broken Matt Hardy. But he's not even an official entrant. Unbeknownst to everyone else in the ring. On the other side, <laughs> little Maxwell crawling into the ring and eliminating Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman has never seen this small creature before. He's entranced, he's confused. I'd like to think King Maxwell has the power and the ability to eliminate one Braun Harambe Strowman. A girl can dream. Tonight on SmackDown Live, we learnt quite a few different things, particularly as it pertains to one Lord Mayor President James Ellsworth and his apparent girlfriend Carmella. First off, Carmella not only is yet to kiss James Ellsworth, James Ellsworth has never been kissed and I'm guessing by default is also a virgin. To each their own. Dissension in the Wyatt family camp. Bray, my brother, you need to be careful. Did you see last week's episode? Come on. And now we have this situation. The two children are fighting. Whoops. The loved one gets super kicked in the face. Always the way it goes down. So where to now? Huh? Where to, boys? I think perhaps maybe they just all need to go back to the Wyatt farm, sit around a bonfire, roasting a hobo that they picked up off the street, flat each other's hair, shave Randy's head, bonding exercise, and talk it out. It's too soon. We have a situation between one Norm Dar, one Alicia Fox, and up till this week, one Cedric Alexander. Norm Dar was being somewhat imposing on Alicia, a lot of unwanted attention, which society says is a no. This week on Raw, Alicia decided to prove a point, grabbed Norm Dar, furiously made out with him, and then backing off saying, Cedric was right, you're not man enough to handle me. Interesting. <laughs>
interesting angle to take with that. One might suggest that maybe the next step on one would possibly then get authority involved, not the authority, because I'd probably lock them in a room together, but authority figures involved, the police, a teacher, a hitman. But this was a very interesting tactic Alicia decided to use on Omda, which got me thinking. Maybe that's a tactic that a few other of the superstars could use. Rusev, Enzo bullying you? Kiss him. Keep getting jumped by someone? Callisto should have just climbed up that big old tree called Baron Corbin and made out with him. Boss threatening to fire you. Mick Foley should have just grabbed Steph McMahon and made the hell out with her. I don't know what it would have proved, but it's a tactic. You want the championship belt? Make out with them. You want a win at the Royal Rumble? Make out with them. You want to be part of a tag team and they won't let you in. Well, guess what? It's just logical, right? It's not confusing at all. <laughs> Saying it out loud, it, it sounds a bit ridiculous. It, Weird. For me, personally, you know what I find sexy? Consent. Respect. Oh. <sighs> Sorry, it's getting really hot in here. <laughs> Maybe at the end of the day, if Nanda really, really truly wants to be with Alicia Fogs, you should just try being a nice guy. Because it's kind of fucking creepy. I mentioned a few weeks ago a super team of champions. Everyone would have to bow down to them. Basically to be the peasants that they are in comparison to these wonderful lady creatures of the queendom. Recently, I have been somewhat impressed slash in love with Nia Jax and her monster scare tactics. Previously, my favorite move of hers was running into the barricade at full speed. But now it's become... <laughs> kicking Sasha Banks' leg out from under her. Nothing against Sasha Banks, just really enjoy watching that. If you put together a mega team, the new faces of fear, while the Wyatts go on Dr. Phil and work their shit out, I feel like we really have something. They're like the perfect combination of sexy, cute, badass, and homicide. They start off as like the rough and tough, beating people up, beat up John Cena. They'll just crash both brands because they don't need no rules. As well, if Jack Gallo's etiquette class 2.0 isn't going very well, they will just step in and beat the shit out of anyone who is out of line. Kind of like Tarantino's The Powerpuff Girls. They are the super villain heroes that the WWE needs right now.